Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you for everyone that is here. That Lord, that this is a very important message because uh, we are talking about only seven years more to the return of your son. And this is a date that uh, according to scripture, it is very clear to me and to my wife that this is a very important year. And it is so important that we need to shout out from the mountaintop, from the rooftop to everyone who has years to hear that we need to take heed, that we need to prepare for the soon return of our Lord Yeshua. In the mighty name of Yeshua, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. Now, the takeaway, I think it's important to set this uh, teaching session, uh, which we right. have many, many slides, in the right context, so that the main key takeaway is, I would like all of you to know that what the scripture says, that we do not know the time and the season uh, for the return of Yeshua, has a caveat, and I'm going to talk more about why we as wise people of the Lord will know, all right? And I'm going to show you by in scripture so that we will do away with this uh, misunderstanding that we are always kept in the dark and that we do not know, all right? So we'll go through scripture by scripture, and that will be one of the two main takeaways that you have from this afternoon teaching. The second uh, main takeaway is that the day of the Lord points towards this year 2030, which is barely seven years of for six years from now. All right. Unless the Holy Spirit show us that we have more time. All right? So again, there is a caveat. But I'm going to show you together with my wife what the scripture points towards this 2030 as a very important year for all of us to take note of. Amen. All right, so can we foretell the day of Yeshua's return? Of course we can. Let's go through the scripture. The day of Yeshua's return is known as the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is also uh, equivalent to a thousand years, according to 2 Peter, all right, uh, verse uh, chapter 3. Now, reading from Thessalonians chapter uh, 1, Thessalonians 5, verse 1 to 3. But concerning the time and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Now, just pause here. This is where Paul wrote to the people from Thessalonica. And they say that, you know, the day will come where the rapture will take place. But then they are concerned as to when is the year and the date of Yeshua's return. So this is what uh, Paul wrote to them, specifically say that uh, there is no need for them, for he to write to them. Because you will know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. That means Paul is saying that uh, he will come without you knowing. And now Paul is speaking to them in the present tense of the time where he spoke to the people from Thessalonica. All right. He's not talking about the future. For when they say peace and safety and suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pain come upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. Now, in a nutshell, what Apostle Paul is saying that when Yeshua returns, it is just like the, the, the women that are going through childbirth. It is a series of uh, birth pangs. And uh, when the time it comes, the mother will know. <laughs> the instant, all right, when the baby comes out, the mother will know. The mother will not be kept unaware of. But it really, in a nutshell, it says that it is not so immediate. It will take some days and years to come. Moving on, can we foretell the season and the year of Yeshua's return? Certainly we can. But let's look at Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father knows. Again, in the context of this verse, it was Yeshua speaking to his disciple because the disciple asked him, when are you going to bring the kingdom of God uh, on earth? Now, he says that uh, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father knows. But we were told in Revelation 1.1 1, 1, that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him. And God gave Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, the revelation of when he's supposed to go and fetch the bride. And we are also deemed to be the co-heir of Yeshua. We are also deemed to be the sons and daughters of the mighty God. So what the Lord 
Father, Abba, Father tells to Yeshua, in the same manner, we will not be kept in the dark. If you understand and know your identity as a son and daughters of the mighty God. So here in that context, Yeshua just told his disciples that in the context of the time and date at that moment, it is for that present moment, but it's not meant for the future that we will be kept in uh in darkness. All right, so Matthew 24, 42, he says, Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour and your Lord is coming. Yeshua told his disciple, You need to be watchful, watchful and wait, but they have patience. Acts 1 7. And this is the time before Yeshua ascended to heaven. Again, the disciple asked him, When are you returning back and establish the kingdom? And again, Yeshua told his disciple at that moment, and this is what they say. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or season which the Father has put in his own authority. So this is exactly what Yeshua told his disciple. Watch and pray. Wait, because the time is not yet in that season. All right, so here, Revelation 1 and verse 1, I really mentioned that. We will know because we are co-heir with Yeshua as the Father reveals to the Son. Son, go and receive your bride. In the same manner as co-heir of Yeshua, as a son and daughter of the mighty God, we will likewise be informed. All right, so Yeshua told his disciple in the present tense, which I mentioned during the time when he spoke to them. They do not know the day, or the hour, but he asked them to watch and pray. Repeated again in Acts 1 7, he was speaking specifically to his disciple during the time when the question was posed to him, and not something that in the future we will still be kept in the dark. Moving on, the wise will know. Who are the wise? Definitely the sons and daughters of the mighty God. And I want to really stress all of us who listen to this the video teaching that we and our identity is not just a servant of God, or not just a friend of God, not even just the bride of God alone, but we are his sons and the daughters and co-heir with Yeshua. Now, this is a very precious understanding. So get rid of all the cobweb of the misteaching that you are only a servant of God. But your identity is so precious. And I say that again, you are the sons and daughters of the mighty God. Amen. And in Matthew 24, 32 to 33, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. At now, the door. Yeshua said that. What is a fig tree? A fig tree is a representation of Israel. Where Israel has budded, where Israel in May, 14, 1948, right, became a nation again. That is where the fig tree has budded. And this is the time that Yeshua says, my return is near at the doorstep. Oh, I'm getting excited. All right, so Matthew 24, 42 to 44. Again, he says, watch therefore. For you do not know what hour and the, the Lord, your Lord is coming. But know this. Again, he spoke in the present tense to his disciple. That if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allow his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. But Amen. what we know is when we know that the time of his coming we will be prepared and the evil one will not be able to break into our safety zone. I want to mention that, right? He says, you will not uh, allow his house to be broken down. So when we know, we will know definitely and we will be kept safe. And this is so important. Amen. All right, so, so important. And then Matthew 24, 45 to 47. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? I want to declare. That today, you and I, my whole household, we are belonging to this faithful and wise people whom his master made ruler over his household. To give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. But surely I say to you that he will make him rulers over all his goods. Now, this is so important to understand 
The reason why Yeshua mentioned this, what he said that if you are the wise person, you're the wise son and daughters of the mighty God, you will know and you will make ready. And when you are ready, he will make you rulers over the nations. All right, so I declare and I decree again, we must know our identity. We are the sons and daughters of the mighty God. We are the people who are wise and not those foolish virgins. Amen. Okay. So here, the wicked will not know. Why? Look at Matthew 24, 37 to 41. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Now listen to the time of Noah. Who are the people who were taken away? These are the people who are foolish, who are wicked, and they do not know the time and the season. But who knows? Noah knows. And Noah and his family prepared this big ark, the big boat, that kept his family afloat and saved. So they will not be overcome by the deluge of the, the flood, Reading on, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one taken and the other left. Now I want to mention this uh, particularly in the light of uh, Prophet Robert's teaching. This is not talking about the rapture, <laughs> which what other teachers of the past talk about this verse, referring to the one that was caught up is the one that has been raptured out, and therefore it is a pre trip teaching that we need not be fearful. This is talking about those who are caught up, are taken to the place of the carcasses, where those are the ones that are the evil ones, the Nephilims, the, uh, the, the people that are, you know, hybrids, and they are taken to the battleground to be slaughtered and removed from the earth. So again, there are many wrong teachings in the past. So now we are just like cleaning up, you know, the wrong teachings and throwing them out and filling our understanding with what the word of God actually says. So Daniel 12, 10, <laughs> many will be purified, many, made white and refined. But listen to this, but the wicked shall do wickedly as in the days of Noah. And none of the wicked shall understand, understand what? The time and the season of the return of Yeshua. But, listen, but the wise shall understand. So here we are in the category of the wise. We have the identity of the sons and daughters of the mighty God. Therefore, what Daniel has said, we will know, we will know and we will be informed beforehand. And so this afternoon teaching is to really emphasize from scripture, what is the most likely timing for the return of Yeshua, and I'm going to develop this theme in greater detail as we move along. Matthew 24, 48 to 51. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begin to beat his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of the servant will come at a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint, it, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be whipping and snatching of teeth. Now this applies to those who do not know. And those who do not know are those who do not seek the truth. These are the wicked people who refuse to know the truth and they will be caught by surprise like the thief in the night. Revelation 3.3 3. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. So therefore, I'm us beseeching all of us. Hold fast to the teaching of the Lord and repent from what you have learned that is incorrect. Wrong teachings of the past. And fill your understanding with the correct teaching by searching scripture. Therefore, if you were not watched, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Now, these words applies to only for the wicked. All right, those who are not seeking the truth, not applying to everyone in general. So here again, I want to stress 
that the main takeaway or one of the two main takeaway is to understand that we belong to the category of those who are wise and we will know for a certainty the hour and the date and the year in which Yeshua returns. All right, let's look at Prophet Daniel. What Daniel says in uh, Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, this is what the angels uh, told him. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Now, Prophet Daniel is writing, right? He has some revelation, but God says, the angels of the Lord say to him, right? Gabriel told him, shut up the book, seal the book until when? He didn't say seal the book permanently, but seal the book until the time of the end. And now we are near to the time of the end. That's why this mystery is unfolded. The book that Daniel had written in, uh, but it was revealed to him, will be revealed. Amen. And when is this going to be revealed? Listen to this. This is the time stamp. Many shall run to and flow. Now, don't we do that? <laughs> One day I'm in Israel, another day I'm in Bali, another day I'm back in Singapore, another day I will be in Philippines, another time I will be in uh, Finland. So we are traveling to and fro, right? And then the punchline here is knowledge shall increase. Amen. I'm seeing that knowledge is increasing exponentially. What my wife and I learned uh, almost like uh, 50 years ago, all right? almost 50 years ago in the university is no more relevant all right these are things which are really uh you know uh over and superseded by new information and new knowledge what we learn is how to think logically how to think rationally how to think and read the word of god and know that we have a rational mind and the spirit of god will reveal to us the truth. Now, that is the most important thing that we learn from university uh, period. All right, not all those uh, formulas and theories that are now totally obsoleted because of new information. Reading on, verse 9 to 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. You see, mention it double from verse 4 and again repeated in verse 9 until the time of the end so when it's repeated we need to take notice it is not that everything is concealed and sealed up forever but the sealing of the information leading to yeshua's return will be revealed to us at the time of the end and then reading on many shall be purified and make pure i proclaim and decree that all of us will be in this category, that we will be refined by the refined fire, that we will be made pure and we'll be made white and uh, like the gowns of the bright, right, pure and white. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But again, the wise shall understand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I do not know about at this stage. The more I speak about the wise shall understand and knowing that we are in that category of the wise, I'm excited. I yeah. wish that you and I pray that you are likewise excited. And the prophet said you mix with the wise, you'll be wise also. So the wise has to come together and discuss and share notes and encourage one another and get more and more revelation. During this morning, my dear wife asked the prophet one question. And the prophet was so excited. He says that we have been asking him since uh, 2017 and we were with him in Penang. In fact, we asked him so many questions from morning till afternoon <laughs> on a one-to-one -one basis until we have to catch the flight home to Singapore. And he remembers it. And uh, the question that my dear wife asked is that... Uh, <clears throat> Based on his book, Pornogram is so much information. And that time we are not so conversant also. Now as we seek after the Lord and seek the truth that Jesus is revealing to us daily. That's why our knowledge also has grown Amen. exponentially. And my wife asked the prophet, well, how do we prepare? And he said this, prayer, and not only just prayer by yourself, but prayer in groups. 
in groups of small groups because he said when two or more gather together to pray in Yeshua's name, Yeshua will be present and not only he is present, his spirit will be present Amen. and his spirit will reveal to us what is to come. So he encourage all of us you know, to get together regularly as a group to pray and ask the spirit of God to reveal to us. And I think uh, this is something that we would like to start in the very near future. And also, you don't need to be a very big group so that everyone will get a chance to pray. And uh, in a small group setting, everyone has their own sphere of influence. So you can start from your own Jerusalem, then you expand now. Of course, uh, other than your own uh, circles of influence, you have your own church. So within the church, there will be like-minded people who are, who are uh, conscious of the soon coming of Jesus. You can gather together and share notes and prepare and pray together. The easiest way is actually when we upload the, the teaching to the YouTube. All you need to do after you read, after you take whatever note and check the Bible, you share it with your friends. Because a lot of people are still quite blur, no? Mong Cha Cha is the, <laughs> is the Cantonese word. They, they are not aware, a lot of them are still life as usual. It's like Jesus is coming back. In, long, long time. All right, let's move on quickly because there are many more slides that I have to show. Now, these slides here basically shows what Daniel was saying that, you know, at the end of the time, the people will be going to and flow and knowledge will increase exponentially. Now, just look at this slide. Now we have uh, all this uh, information overload. We have um, advances in genetics, uh, deep learning, artificial intelligence, cyborg, transhumanism, you know, um, you know, automated cars and, you know, the, 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 the information and the knowledge is as though that man is now like substituting him as God. Right? So that is where the danger is. The increase in knowledge is so tremendous that uh, it is so steep a curve that we know that when Daniel mentioned, this is a very strong indication that we are in the end of times. So Yeshua disciple in the first century saints were not told about the time of the end because it is not for them to know because there are still many, many more years to come. When will this time of the end be revealed? Daniel 12, 4 says that the knowledge will increase exponentially Amen. as just I mentioned, right? We can, it is scary, it is really scary. Time goes by so quickly that now you look at your children, what they learn now is actually what you learn in your older days in school. Right, they learn things which we hardly know about. You know, all these things about codings that we don't even know, and coding of uh, you know uh, uh, information of machines, and you know there are so much knowledge. And now human beings are, you know, inventing even the CRISPR technology, able to change your DNA to Modify. basically uh, help you to uh, regain back what you have lost functionally. So uh, we are really living in this. Uh, information age now that the wise, the sons of God will understand and know the time and season. But again, the wicked, the son of Satan will not know like in the days of Noah. So again, I want to drive this in. I, mean, I really need to drive this in. This main, one of the two main takeaway is that we will know. Why is it that we will know? Because scripture says so. Now we've got to understand that what we learned in the past that we do not know, and then therefore we say, well, we do not know how to wear myself, forget it, we don't know. So we just drift along. But scripture now clearly reveals to us the time is now when people travel to and fro and knowledge increase exponentially. And this is defined by Daniel as the time of the end where the book will be open and the truth will be revealed. Amen. Amen. So understanding God's prophetic principle, this is another very key thing. Right? The prophetic principle is one day as a thousand years. Now, where do we find it in the Old Te New Testament? In the New Testament, in 2 Peter 3.8. Let me read. Beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord, one day is 
a thousand years and a thousand years is one day now you know that our father is the creator of all things to him time is timeless he look at it he knows the time the present uh, the, the past and the future all in a one stretch he sees everything he knows how we're going to say right now you know before i was even born he know that yehu will be talking today on the 6th of april uh, talking about this wonderful revelation that we know the time and season he knows it but now i'm just doing it isn't it amazing so therefore a one day to the lord could be a thousand years to us and reverse a thousand years to us could be a is a one day to the lord now, this is a very important uh, in terms of a yardstick for the timeline and to understand prophetic uh, uh, messages. All right, seven days is equivalent to 7,000 years, according to this one day to a thousand, a biblical 7,000 years. Now, why did I say that? In the Old Testament, it's also mentioned. Now, this uh, epistle of Barnabas, it was one of the, one of the holy uh, books that were considered even during the days uh, uh, of the uh, fathers of the faith but it was not included as part of the bible not right? canonized yes but then it did also mention about this about the one day is a thousand years and a thousand years to one day now why do i bring this up i want to show you that this understanding by peter who wrote it in his epistle is also mentioned in the old uh, in, uh, in in the epistle of barnabas all right, so it is something that not only Peter said it, other apostles and prophets also mentioned that. The psalmist also mentioned that in the Old Testament, and this is recorded in Psalm 93 to 4. Let me read. You turn people back to dust. Of course, when we die, we return back from dust to dust. Amen. Saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight, referring to God's sight. Uh, in our sight, right? It's like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night. So here the psalmist understood that a thousand years in uh, earthly timeline is just could be a watch in the night for the Lord. So again, we have the, both the New Testament uh, prophets and also the Old Testament the psalmist also understand this principle. Now, so let's go back to uh, the one day all right the one day uh, met, uh, uh, meaning now sin came into the world and adam died in one day now this is recorded in genesis 2 verse 16 to 17. the lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, we understand this, all right? In this scripture, it's very clear. They say that in the day that Adam and Eve took from the tree, of the, from the fruit of the, of the tree of good and evil, they will die. But look at what scripture says. Adam died spiritually in that day. That's correct. How do we know? Because we know that they saw their body, the light has left them. They were covered by glory of the Lord. Before. And all of a sudden, when they took that uh, forbidden fruit, they saw that they were naked. How did they know they were naked? Because the light has left them. And therefore, the light is equivalent to the spiritual life, you know, the communion and with the the God. And also. therefore, they spiritually, they died on that day. And then they cover themselves with fig leaves, all right? That is in Genesis 3, 7. But the Bible recorded in Genesis 5, verse 5, that Adam lived for 930 years. Now, is there a contradiction here? If it died in one day that's mentioned in Genesis 2, 16 to 17, how come, <laughs> how come Adam lived to 930 years? Now, so how do we reconcile this one day to a thousand years and 1,000 years to a day? Hang on. Prophetically, this is how we can do it, all right? One day is a thousand years. Uh, we are still short by 70 years, all right? Because 1,000 less 930, to make it to a thousand, we are short by 70 years. So where do we find these 70 years to make that Genesis 2, 16 to 17 falls into this one day is equivalent to a thousand years. All right, let's go on further. 
let's reconcile this discrepancy. Now, let's get back to scripture. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says, So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. Yeah, then when God breathed his, uh, his breath into the, 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 the clay, the, uh, the figure of the body of Adam, Adam became a living being. All right, But the last Adam, we say, became a life-giving spirit. Where the last Adam is referred to as none other than Yeshua. All right, there are two Adams mentioned. The first Adam, which is, uh, well, <laughs> Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and the last Adam, which is none other than Yeshua, in Luke 1 32. He will be great and will be called the sons of the highest. All right, and this is a prophecy of, uh, you know, the birth of Yeshua. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. So we know that Yeshua come from the lineage of David, right? And he will rule uh, from Jerusalem, all right? Uh, as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. So the second Adam, which is our Messiah, is also from the lineage of King David. And so now back to the reconciliation of this uh, short of 70 years, all right? To make a full 1,000 years. Uh, we have just a minute. I think uh, we have um, Adam lived for nine hundred and thirty years, but now King David lived for how many years? The Bible recorded in Second Samuel five four that uh, when he was thirty years old, he began to reign, and he reigned for forty years before he died. So thirty plus forty becomes King David's lifespan was seventy years. So here, let's do the max. His first con coming is connected to Adam, all right? And then the second coming is connected to King David. We are talking about the Messiah. So Adam is 930 years and he died. King David was 70 years when he died. And this adds up to a thousand years. So we can now safely say that what the principle of one day to a thousand and one thousand to one day still holds. All right, despite the fact that Bible says that when Adam took from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, he died on one day. And now we can reconcile that he died spiritually immediately. And then he died together with the lineage of the second Adam, a total of one thousand years, which is again equivalent to one day. So this is uh, how we reconcile it. And um, so here, this is so amazing that this 1,000 years is also connected to the 1,000 years rule and reign of Yeshua in Jerusalem or from Jerusalem. All right. And so therefore, this 1,000 years is also equivalent to one day. All right. And when we talk about the day of the Lord, this day of the Lord is not just one day in particular. It also could be a thousand years rule and reign of Yeshua as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords from Jerusalem. So one day of the Lord is also equivalent to the millennial period of the rule and reign of Yeshua. Now this principle is so amazing. You can apply this principle into many multiple prophetic uh, 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 messages. All right, and we're going to develop this as we go along in this sharing. So when will the Messiah come? Now, 2 Peter 3, verse 4 to 7. Now, this is a case whereby uh, the people were ridiculing Peter, all right? And reading from verse 4, it say, Where is this promise of his coming? For since the father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, these people were mocking Peter. He's saying that, look, you know, you promised that uh, Yeshua is returning, but the fathers have fell asleep for so many years. And yet, when is he coming? Verse 5, for this they willfully forget, right? This is what Peter say, that by the word of God, heavens were of old. All right, so this is what Peter is trying to frame it, that uh, this coming of Yeshua is not just one day or two days or one year or three years, but it comes in many, many years later. We'll fully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world then existed, perished. Now, Peter brought no, uh, them all the way back 
to the days of Noah, all right, where every living being were destroyed except Noah and his family and the animals that were, 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 were rescued in pairs that entered the ark and kept saved. But the heavens and the earth were now, which are now preserved, all right, so he's talking now about our current time. The days of the flood is over. All those Nephilims and all the wicked people have been destroyed and Noah came and repopulated the earth. But this earth, this present heaven and earth, which is preserved by the word, are reserved for fire. So we know that the earth will be finally destroyed by fire Amen. until the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. So judgment will come and the judgment will come in the form not by flood anymore, but by the fire, the devouring fire that come up from the mouth of Yeshua as mentioned in Revelation 19. So the now we want to come to this important thing that we come to our second important takeaway, which is six years from now, 2030. All right, as the most likely date that we understand from scripture is the date where Yeshua will return. And so take heed, it's not many years from now. Therefore, we should repent from what we have not been doing right to begin to do what is right. Amen. So the date setter is that God's calendar has been corrupted by the evil one. We know it. All right, when God started the calendar in uh, the time, the years of Exodus, he told um, Moses that it is going to be year one, all right, uh, year two, uh, 30 days, and days, days are mentioned in numbers, and years are also mentioned in numbers. But uh, when the Israelites were exiled to Babylon, they assimilated the culture of the Babylonians, which is the culture of the wicked. And henceforth, the entire calendar that God has given to the days of uh, Abraham and moving on to Moses were totally corrupted and the months were named after Babylonian's name. So wow. now we have Nisan, we have uh, Tishri, all these are names of Babylonian's uh, uh, terminology. All right, so instead of calling the month in month one, month two, month three, or calling the year, year one, year two, year three, they are all be substituted by names that honor the pagan deities. <sighs> and when I hear that, we really need to repent. So therefore, God's calendar has been corrupted. All right, the month and days have been changed. All right, to Babylonian names. And um, further, during the Roman rule, all right, in the period of Hadrian, all right, uh, God's calendar has taken a change further from the lunar cycle to the solar cycle, right, to our Gregorian calendar of the day. Particularly in the Council of Nicaea in uh, May, uh, I think that year was uh, 325, um, there was change in terms of all the Jewish celebration of the Feast of the Lord, Passover, which recognize, recognizes the, the sacrifice uh, of the lamb, which when Yeshua came as a sacrificial lamb, was totally banned. That's why we are living in such darkness. The Hebrew feast of the Lord removed and substituted by pagan dates. So here, there is so much of us to really repent from what we have been taught wrongly. So, however, the key dates which brings us back to God's calendar is the birth and the death of Yeshua. We know that these are the key markers, all right? And sciences and technology and also archaeological findings and the writing of people like Josephus, all right, give us a very clear understanding of the exact date in which Yeshua was born and the exact year in which he was crucified. All right. So we know that Yeshua, without a shadow of a doubt, confirmed by archaeological digs, confirmed by the writing of Josephus, confirmed by also scientific knowledge of the solar system, of when there is this great star that came upon in Bethlehem, we can authenticate very clearly that Yeshua was born not in AD 0, but in BC 3 or 4 BC. And his death, and his death at the age of 33 was in the year 30 BC. 
AD. Sorry, 30, uh, I made a mistake there, right? 30 AD. Thank you. All right, so here we know that 30 AD is a very significant time that we need to understand. And so therefore, we'll look at what uh, Prophet Isaiah says in 4610. All right, Prophet Isaiah give this very uh, amazing way that we can understand the timeline that God has given us. All right, he says in Isaiah 4610, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time, things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Now what the prophet Isaiah basically say in this verse is that the beginning is to the, uh, 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 the end, the end uh, is found from the beginning. All right, so it's quite a difficult concept to understand, but strictly speaking, I mean, making it simple is that what we know that is what is to come, all right? That means the end of signified by the return of Yeshua can be discovered from the book of Genesis, from the beginning of time. So that's why he says, declaring the end, which is the return of Yeshua for his lovely bride, all right, which we believe that it is 2030, we can find out the understanding from just reading the beginning of the word of god so the end of time is hidden in the beginning of time so yeshua return could be seen from the beginning in genesis 1 which i will take you through in genesis 1 we mentioned that god created the world in six days Amen. and rested on the seventh day and again i want you to remember what we mentioned earlier as the principle of one day is equivalent to a thousand years, a thousand years is equivalent to one day. Just take note of that as we uh, further explain as, as, as we, we go along. So the seven days of creation is um, mentioned in this slide here that uh, is day one to day seven. All right. And with this very important uh, understanding, the time marker that Yeshua death was 2030 and he resurrected also at 2030 his death and resurrection was on the year 30 a.d all right he started his ministry in john 1 on 27 a.d because his ministry stretched over three and a half years right so his death and his resurrection is dated as a time marker on this important year 30 AD. Now, this is something that we need to keep in mind. And as we go towards this creation prophecy that brings us to the understanding that Yeshua will return on day six, or end of day six at the beginning of day seven. And day seven is equivalent to a thousand years, which is what we known as the millennial period. And day one to day six is over a period of 6,000 years. All right, it's a time for creation to the time where the Yeshua, our Lord, will return and to rule and reign on the seventh day, a day of rest, a day of rest where the Bible specifically mentioned that the wolf and the lamb will stay together and, uh, you know, and, and it will be a peace. day of a year of peace over 1000 years. All right, so here. This is the creation prophecy that talks about the earth was created on six days and the Lord rested on the Shabbat, which is a seven day over a period of 7,000 years. One day is to 1,000 years. Seven days is equivalent to 7,000 years. Now let's go through the creation story day by day and then equate it to the return of our Lord Yeshua. Day one. Day one. The Lord says in Genesis 3 to 5, chapter 1, Let there be light, and there was light. And the God saw the light, and that was good. And, the God, and God divided the light from darkness. God called the, day, the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning was the first day. So here was the first day recorded that in day 1, uh, one year, one day is equivalent to a thousand years, so therefore it is zero year to a thousand year 
biblical years, all right, a thousand biblical years. In this case here, light and darkness was introduced, as it mentioned in verse 3 and verse 4. Now, Adam and Eve sinned, and since darkness and light were separated from man. All right, so we know that in this period of time, year zero to 1000 biblical year, we have the creation story. And it mentioned that in that time, beginning of this 1000 years, we recorded that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they took the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and henceforth, light and darkness was separated. And that is the fulfillment of day one, which is over a period of 1000 years from year zero to year 1000. Year day two, from 1000 to 2000 biblical years. Verse six, then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of waters and let it divide the waters from waters. The God, thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. Now the firmament is the heaven that we see, the skies the that sky. we see. All right, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning was the second day. I want to note here, the day, in according to God's timetable, it starts from the evening and then to the morning. All right, unlike us, now we know that the day starts at midnight, which is the morning, uh, beginning of the morning to the night. So the great flood, <clears throat> in that period of time, from 1,000 to 2,000 years, we know there was a story of Noah. All right, story of Noah that was mentioned um, in Genesis, and, 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 and the waters fill the whole world, right? That's the fulfillment of day two of creation. Now let's go to year 2000 to 3000 biblical years that is denoted by day three and see the similarities. Now in, in day three, God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs that yield seeds and the fruit trees that yield fruits according to its kind. whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit was seed in itself according to its kind. And God saw it that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. So in the third day, God created seeds, all right? And what happened in that millennial period? of 2,000 to 3,000 biblical years. In that time, we notice that Abraham was promised that his seed will be given land, all right? Abraham was promised by God that uh, his seed will fill the world, fill the earth, and they were given the promised land. So in that sense, in the day, day uh, three, where God provided seeds for the earth, God also provided Abraham with his seed the seed is in the form of the miracle child called Isaac. All right, and then he gave him the promised land. And this is equivalent to the day three of creation. Now, day four is from 3,000 to 4,000 biblical years. And from Genesis 1, 16 to 19, basically on the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon and the stars. All right, so how does, how do we relate that to uh, the present uh, day for the fourth millennium, Yeshua became the light of the world. All right, John 1, John 12, 46. He came as the light of the world. He came towards the end of the 4,000 biblical years. And Messiah was also called the sun in Malachi 4, 2. Let me read. But to you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Now, this sun here is also in the fourth day of creation where the sun was created. So this is how we relate it to the first coming of the Messiah is the fulfillment of the day four of creation. Day five, 4,000 to 5,000 biblical years. And here we were told that the, God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moved and then he he created also the winged birds according to his kind. And then God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And this was the fifth day of creation. Now let's look at how we relate it to the 4,000 to 5,000 biblical years. 
fish and birds were created and commanded to multiply. So in the beginning of the fifth millennium, we were told that Yeshua's disciples were commanded to be fishers of men. And this was the ministry of Yeshua, to be the fishers of men. And there also the dove came as the Holy Spirit to fill the disciple, and they were commanded in the Great Commission to make disciples. So therefore, the multiplication of disciples are the, is the fulfillment of day five of creation. Day six, 5,000 to 6,000 biblical year, which is the period that we are living. God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every living thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created male and female he created. And this was on the sixth day. So what happened on the sixth day? Man was created. Man was told to multiply and fill the earth, take dominion over the creation. So at the end of the sixth millennia, man has multiplied and expanded exponentially. Now in the earth, we have about 8 billions of people living on earth. Man exercised dominion over the earth is the fulfillment of day six of creation. All right, with our scientific development, we actually control the entire uh, creation. Uh, you know, all animals are known to uh, uh, under our dominion and we domesticated many of them as food for us. So day six to day seven. Now, this is an important time where we have the millennial period. All right. So thus heaven and earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. He rested on the seventh day from all his work. We had done, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now, so here we are entering into what we call the Shabbat rest. And it's mentioned in Hebrew 6, uh, 4, 6 to 10. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designated a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time, it has been said, Today, it will hear his voice. Do not harden your heart. So therefore, we are now in this season. God is speaking to you and I. Do not harden our heart. All right? For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remained therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his work as God did from his. Therefore, we must learn that to enter into God's rest and the final rest is where he returns. And we believe 2030 is where he uh, uh, will return for us. And therefore, we will enter into the 1,000 years of rest, a Shabbat rest in this millennial period. So the Shabbat rest is on the seventh day that God created and see has entered his rest. So according to Hebrew 4, we are still waiting for this fulfillment of this Shabbat rest. The seventh day of the week pictures the millennial rule and reign of Yeshua. This is the 1000 years which will take place after Yeshua returns. And this is also known as the day of the Lord. I mentioned the day is a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. And this thousand years rest is the Shabbat rest that we are looking forward to. So in summary, the creation story covers a period of seven days or 7,000 years. Amen. The Shabbat rest enters 1,000 years, begin with judgment when Yeshua returns and ends with the resurrection of the day. All right. So here, we're beginning with judgment the devil, Antichrist, and the false prophet, when Yeshua returns, will be thrown to the lake of fire for devil and Antichrist. But the false, I mean, sorry, for Antichrist and the false prophet will be thrown in the lake of fire. But for the devil, the dragon will be kept in the waterless pit for a thousand years. And therefore, he will be judged where the resurrection of the dead, 
comes after 1000 millennia period. Yeshua returns to gather us to the promised land and we will reign and rule with him. Now this gathering of us to the promised land will only meant for those who are returning with him to rule and reign. And the company which I mentioned in my past teaching will be the bride, uh, will be those who are martyred and will be the saints of old. We will come together and rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And after the thousand years, the dragon will be uh, returned yeah, back. Really. And then they will deceive the world again. And for those unrepentant people who live through the thousand years, will be then destroyed. And then there will be the resurrection of the dead. And there will be the uh, great, great throne. white throne will be uh, instituted. And for those whose name are not written in the book of the Lamb of uh, will, be, will be thrown into the lake of fire. So Yeshua is also known as the Lord of the Shabbat, right? Amen. Mentioned because in Matthew 12, 8, for the man, for the Son of God, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Shabbat. So here, the Lord of the Shabbat, the Shabbat is over the period of 1,000 years. He will rule and reign, all right? And so Isaiah 46, 10 is what we mentioned. The end is revealed from the beginning. Where we are at the end of time, where we look forward to his return on 2030, is how we can de 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 discover from the beginning, from the book of Genesis, on the day of creation, the seven days of creation that we mentioned. So here, let's move on to authenticate and to verify from other part of scripture why 2030 is such an important year. We talk about the dispensation prophecy. All right, the dispensation is uh, divided into three dispensation era. The first is uh, over 2000 years, over the first two days, it's called the dispensation of the, com dispensation. Dispensation of the conscience of man. All right, dispensation of conscience is from Adam to Moses. This is the time where men are guided by their conscience, by the fact that they know God, because the Spirit of God is in them. All right, and therefore, it goes over 2,000 years, it's known as the dispensation of conscience. And when the next 2,000 years, day three and day four, will be known as the dispensation of law, where Moses went up to Mount Sinai, is given the Torah. All right, so this is the 2000 year period that then ends with the birth of Yeshua when he declared the kingdom of God, where he started his ministry. That is from day five to day six at the AD 30, where he was uh, crucified and he resurrected. And therefore, he declared the kingdom of God is now open for those who know and those who enter in. All right, he came to declare the kingdom of God over his ministry for three and a half years. And when his death, he gave up his Holy Ghost on the cross and he declared it is finished. And therefore on the plaque at the cross mentioned the king of the Jews that declare that the kingdom where the king reigns has been established. Therefore it is AD 30. And that starts with the dispensation of the church age, which is also known as the dispensation of grace. Yeshua will come to judge us when he returns in AD 2030, at the end of the 6,000 years, the end of the three dispensation era, he will come and establish his kingdom during the millennial period, ruling not from Singapore, not from Malaysia, not from any place, but from Jerusalem. All right, so that ends the 7,000 years or the seven days. And this premise on the fact that he died on AD 30 and taking another 2,000 years, another two more days, he will return. 2,000 years add on to AD 30 will be the year AD 2030. So this is from the dispensation uh, prophecy. Next, we talk about the Jubilee prophecy. Now, I point out all this is basically to point towards what Scripture says, that based on AD 30, it's the year of his death and the year of his resurrection. That year of his return is 
2030. Now, what did the Jubilee prophecy say? Now, what is a Jubilee? A Jubilee is 50 years. All right, a Jubilee is a year whereby land is returned. All right, so in this verse here, in Genesis 6, 3, uh, let me read. And before that, let me take a sip of my coffee. In um, Genesis 3, 6, God said, all right, after he knows that the, the, the people on earth has turned so wicked, all right, he says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with men forever. Now, I say forever, will not strive with men forever. So there will be a day in which he will no longer strive with us. Now we know that we are constantly, uh, you know, having our struggle because of our sinful nature. And God is always striving with us until when? Until 120 years. Now, for indeed he is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. So in this verse, uh, let me break it down for you in Genesis 6 3. What the Lord says is that he will not strive with men because his lifespan will be 120 years maximum. And therefore, how do we translate this into 2030? We use what we call the Jubilee principle. A Jubilee is a year comprising 50 years. All right, so 120 Jubilee years is deemed to be 6,000 years. All right, so here the dispensation of conscience, um, the dispensation of conscience is over two days, over 40 Jubilee years, which is 2,000 years. All right, then another 40 Jubilee years is day three and day four, another 2,000 years. Another 40 Jubilee years is another 2,000 years. They give us a total of 6,000 years that we have dealt with earlier on. So here, 6,000 years is equivalent to 120 Jubilee that translate to what the Lord say, He will not strive with men forever. That means over these 6,000 years, we will struggle with our sinful nature. But when Yeshua returns, all right, we will be with Him for that 1,000 millennia period, whereby we will live with him. Those who are with him are the bright, and those who are with him are the martyrs, and those who are with him are the friends who are the Old Testament, Old Testament saints. saints. All right? So he will return, and we will no more strive with him after the period of 6,000 years, which is 120 Jubilee, which is mentioned here as the period of time where God will no longer contend with us for 120 years, which is translated also in the Jubilee prophecy as 120 Jubilees, which is again equivalent to 6,000 years, which ties in very uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to this creation prophecy of six days of creation. So here, again, this is premise on the fact that Yeshua was born in AD uh, BC 3, 4, 3 or 4 and he died in AD 30 and taking 2,000 years of the church age, he will return for his bride in AD 2030. Amen. Amen. So this is the Jubilee principle uh, that was mentioned in Leviticus 25, 8 to 12. And liberty is declared. So when the Jubilee principle comes in, the end of the 120 Jubilee year, indeed, we are entering into the promised era of the millennial rule and reign. Everything will be returned back to us. The land will be returned. Liberty will be declared. Slaves will be released and be set free. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt at the age of 80. All right. That is 80 Jubilee year is equivalent to 4,000 years. And that right smack to the time where the Torah was given. Yeshua came after 4,000 years and set us free. The Israelites, because of sin, wandered 40 years in the wilderness. Now, 40 years, uh, 40 Jubilee is another 2,000 years. So you add back 2,000 years to 4,000 is the time where Yeshua returns. At the same time, at the end of Moses' life, all right, after age 30, age 80, which is 4,000 years, his prodigy, the one that succeeded him is Joshua. 
And Joshua's name is also called Yeshua too. So Joshua is another uh, name uh, similar to Yeshua. And Joshua led his people into the promised land after Moses had died. And in the same way, Yeshua will lead us into the promised land, Amen. into the promised Sabbath rest of 1,000 years rule and reign of Yeshua. Isn't it so beautiful? Joshua leading into the promised land after Moses had died and then went wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, which is the 2,000 years that we have been wandering, waiting for the return of Yeshua to bring us into the millennial period of 1,000 years. So this is so amazing, right? We look at it from the creation principle. We look at it from the dispensation uh, uh, era. We look at it again from the Jubilee principle. And every of these things quoted in scripture points towards the return year of Yeshua is 2030 AD. Amen. So here, when we look at the Jubilee principle, we applied that just now. And uh, we need not dwell in this any further. So here, uh, Exodus prophecy is again also pointed towards 2030. Now, the Exodus principle is what we talked about just now. Uh, we mentioned about Moses bringing the people uh, to the wilderness. The people wandered in the wilderness for another 40 years, which is equivalent to another 40 jubilee, another 2,000 years. So we mentioned here, over here, Moses lived for 120 years. All right. Uh, that is equivalent to 6,000 years. So therefore, we have this understanding that uh, Moses led his people out of bondage at 80 years, all right, at 4,000 years, and the Israelites wander in wilderness for another 40 years. So this add up to 6,000 years, all right? And Moses left, lived for 120 years. The same principle that applied that points towards that this year 2030 it's a very important year and we believe reading through scripture confirming it that it will be year 2030 so here again this is the jubilee principle uh, applying daniel prophecy uh, that looking at uh, daniel prophecy it was relating to this time where the jesus was mentioning that this temple will be destroyed and you know, you'll be raised in three days. And therefore, the Pharisees questioned him. Why you say that? In verse uh, John 20, John uh, 2, verse 20, uh, the, they replied, it has taken 40 years to build this temple. And 46. you are 46 years to build this temple. And you are going to raise it in three days? So they were very skeptical. Now, this 46 years, if we translate again in the Jubilee Principle, all right, 46 years times 50 is 2,300 years. Now, so let's go back to the Daniel prophecy. In the restoration of the temple, in Daniel 8, 13 to 14, let me read. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to him, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? A vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation, the surrender of the sanctuary and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. He said to me, it will take 2,300 evenings and morning. Then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. So here, surprisingly, this 2,300 years also correspond to this 46 <clears throat> years. To, it takes them to build this temple. So again, using the Jubilee principle, we can understand Daniel prophecy that relates to these 2,300 years. Now, I want to uh, mention about uh, the teaching of uh, our mentor, uh, Prophet Robert Nawari, uh, that gave us understanding of this very obscure verse uh, prophecy in Daniel 12, uh, verses 11 to 12. Let me read. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up. There shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and come to 1,335 days. Now let me expound and uh, break down this uh, verse 
uh, for clarity. Now, the sacrifice was removed according to uh, Josephus and also according to this uh, writing called uh, the, uh, the book that we refer to by this Bishop Justice. That he mentioned that sacrifice was removed in 6000 BC. Now, we know that. 600. Uh, Sorry, 600 BC. Thank you. And we know that uh, actually uh, the temple, the first temple was destroyed in five, uh, I think it's 586. 586 BC. So there was a disjoint here. Why is it 600 BC where the sacrifice was removed, but the temple was destroyed uh, much uh, later. later? Now, the reason is the sacrifice actually was removed because the article of worship was removed from the temple to be stored in the Jeremiah cave, hidden, hidden because they do, the, 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 the high priest do not want the articles to be captured by the Babylonians. So they took the article of worship and hid it in this cave, which is called the Jeremiah uh, Grotto, and it was hidden from the Babylonians. So therefore, it was removed at, on 600 BC. And because the article was removed, Therefore, the sacrifices ceased uh, in the temple. And the temple was then destroyed in the 586 BC. So from 600 BC, where the sacrifice was uh, taken away, and you add on 1,290 years, all right, you will come to 690 AD, One. 690 AD, but because it crossed over BC and AD, we add on one more year, so it becomes 691 AD. Now, historically, you will see that the doom of the rock was completed in, the, in, a, in year 691 AD. Now, so therefore, it was established that 691 AD, the significant thing is that the doom of the rock was completed on Temple Mount. And this is what Daniel refers to as abomination of desolation. In my other video teaching, I, I dealt with this in much greater detail that you may want to refer to it. So you add on 1,335 days of years to 691 AD, you will come to six, you will come to the year 2026, 20, 27. Now, why is this a two year period of 26 and 27 years? It's because of the Hebrew year. All right. So therefore, why is it that it says in Scripture by Daniel, blessed is he who waits and come to this 1,335 days. Now, what is so significant about this 2026? 2026, I believe, is the beginning of the Jacob trouble. It's the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And I believe also that why are we blessed? Because Scripture says in the book of Revelation that from that day onwards, those who are trial and those who are martyr will have the work that follows them and they will be blessed and there will be no more tears. So therefore, at the onset of the great tribulation, take note of this. Do not be fearful because if you do not fear your life unto death, you will be blessed. And that's why it mentioned by in Daniel that in this year, 2026, 20, 27, the onset of the Great Tribulation for three and a half years, you will be blessed, all right? Because it is better to be a martyr, to return with Yeshua, to rule and reign. And therefore, adding three and a half years to this beginning of the wrath of the dragon, which will start in very soon. It will start, now it's 2024. It will start in... Uh, another two or three years from now and adding on three and a half years will come to this 2030 the return of yeshua for Amen. his bride and the beginning of his rule and reign so again reading from daniel 12 and from the understanding of the teaching from prophet robert again we establish that 2030 is a very important year Amen. it is likely for the return of a lord Yeshua. So with that, uh, we end our teaching and uh, we will close our teaching with partaking of the Lord's Supper. If you enjoy this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below. You'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom. Goodbye.